wondering what the next step is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone, today. A couple announcements. Um, please be patient with the church office as we um, um, are, are kind of in flux with some things. And if you need something um, that requires attention, um, Please contact me directly, or if you, if for some reason somebody doesn't have my phone number, um, I know Mike does, Muriel does, and uh, they can get they can get in touch with me. Adult Bible study is continuing on Wednesdays uh, via Zoom. Listen, you don't have to have the book. To join the conversation it's always a great conversation it is a dialogue um, 
between myself and um, Rabbi Sarah Perman, and uh, it's it's a good it's a good learning experience if you would like to if you would like to join in um, this week the um, uh, fundraising committee will meet on Thursday at 6:30. I believe I right no. 19th, 19th, um, Thursday the 19th at 6.30. If you got an email from me and it said that it was yesterday, it wasn't. Um, I just don't know what happened, but um, it'll be this Thursday at, at 6.30. Also, mark your calendars um, for the planning team team which will meet on the second Monday in February. We have in the back um, Valentine boxes uh, for our homebound folks. If you would like to take one, fill it with some goodies and deliver it. Uh, I know that um, as I have delivered some, it just makes everyone's day and they love um, that we remember them. So please feel free to take one, fill it, and uh, bring some joy and some love to our homebound folks. February 12th is Super Bowl Sunday, but for us it is Super Sunday, and we are asking that you bring in some soup uh, to fill our, our uh, giving box outside. I tell you all the time, you there are folks that stop by um, and give, but there are folks that stop by and receive, and it's, it's just a wonderful blessing. So we hope you will join us with that. Henry, I promised to wave. I told Henry I would wave, and I asked him to wave back. Henry, Henry, I said I'd wave, man. All right, dude. You have a good worship experience, man. We're getting ready to go. Should we go? Is it time to praise God? Go! Let us praise God together.
Will you please rise as we center ourselves for worship? Called to be light. Called to follow Christ. Called to love God. Please remain standing as we affirm our faith. We believe that God of the cosmos is at work here. We believe that God is fertilizing the soil. We believe that God is planting roots. We believe that God is growing fruit that is yet to be tasted. But until that promised day, when the fig tree stands tall and swords are beaten into plowshares, we believe when our work does not bear fruit, God still loves us. When our soil grows dry and cracked, God still longs for us. When all seems hopeless here on earth, God holds hope for us. The God of the cosmos is at work here. We believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. standing as we sing the summons we are singing all the verses
may be seated. Now is a time for sharing our joys and concerns. Please uh, lift up in prayer Donna Powers Kuntz. Uh, her and Alex were taking the dogs to the vet. Um, unfortunately, one of the dogs pulled Donna and she broke her shoulder. So please be in prayer for her and Alex. Um, our, our, our friend Rich Johnson is, is going away for a week and then, and then he's going to be having some surgery. And it's, it's like not like plastic fun surgery. He's not getting a facelift. It's, it's uh, your ankle, right? Yeah. So um, his recovery is going to be eight to ten weeks. So please uh, be in prayer for, for Rich. Other joys and concerns? Debbie. Please be in prayer for Dave, who's having a medical procedure. Connie. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, how how is she, how is she? Oh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, well, you're going to call the doctor this week, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, let us be in prayer for her. Other, my, I guess the theme is, is falls. My aunt fell this week out of bed, broke, broke her nose, broke um, bones in her nasal cavity. And um, yeah, so she, falls seem to be the theme. I. I went to visit her the day after her fall. Can we please be in prayer for the men and women that care for those who are in um, nursing homes? Um, on my aunt's floor, she's in memory care. There are um, seven patients, and there is one person to care for them. And I want you all to think about that. Someone has to go to the bathroom, someone needs change, someone needs attention, someone needs to be fed, and someone else needs attention too. That is one person. And it is, it is criminal, in my opinion, how we treat men and women um, in that situation. They deserve better. And the folks caring for them are paid low wages and their jobs are so important. So please be in prayer um, for that situation and for those, all those folks because they deserve it and need it. Other joys and concerns? Well, let's pray. we come to you today, God, to find our way, to learn more. Help us to be better disciples. Help us to be better followers. Help us that we may shine. God, even in these moments, we feel the pain, literal pain, of our friends who have had falls or who are having medical procedures or who are alone, who are hurting, who are scared. Walk beside them. And in the 
angst of our fear. We hear the voice of a small child. We're reminding us that there is more, that there is joy to be found, joy to be had, and that we may continue, continue to say out loud that you alone are God and you alone are holy. We pray this and so much more. In the name of your Son who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's Bible scripture comes from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah chapter 49, the first seven verses. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely, my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, the one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. God, open our hearts to receive your word this day, that we may receive and understand your vision for our lives. Amen. This particular chapter in Isaiah uh, becomes a switch because in the chapters um, just before chapter 49, it is a conversation with Jacob and it is um, a lament and, and it is directed to Jacob. 
scholars argue because in this chapter, it changes from Jacob to Israel. And the argument is, are we still talking about Jacob? Or are we talking about Israel? And granted, um, Jacob's name changes, but it is believed by most scholars that Israel is um, the name for all of God's people. And that is who uh, this scripture is directed to. It is an interesting scripture that comes in the time of Epiphany when we are filled with hope. We've seen the wise men. We've, we've seen Jesus baptized. And now there is a little bit of complaining going on. But isn't that like us? This is a hard season. We just had joys and concern, and while there, there were some joys, um, let's face it, we talked about falls and surgeries and, and, and um, care of, of our loved ones, and there are things that I know some of you haven't spoken out loud for whatever reason. There are folks watching at home, and I'm sure they have things on their hearts and minds that we're not hearing, but it's there. And so you hear this lament, you hear this pain, and you wonder, where is their hope? But this scripture reminds us at the beginning that, God, you named me before I was even conceived. You named me. You knew who I was. And if we take a minute, take a minute, think about that. You were known before you were known. Think about that. How powerful and magnificent is that? And so when we think about our problems and our troubles and our burdens, there, there is a God, our God, who knows, who knows who we are. And even more important, knows what we can be. And yet, we like to live in the darkness. We do. There's something about the dark that feels comfortable to us and that we, we, we like to be there because there's something safe about it. We feel, um, we feel good in the darkness. We say that we don't, but we do because we live there a lot. Today's theme is about lighthouses, and there are hundreds of lighthouses up and down our, our coasts, and I did some, I did a little research on, on lighthouses, and on the west coast there's one called Pigeon Point Lighthouse, and it's in central California. Look how beautiful. And it is our lighthouses that shine a light so that our ships don't get into trouble. But it's also an incredible symbol that in the darkness stands a solitary light and it just shines. Up in I don't have my glasses on. Um, hit the next one, Hannah. This is Portland Head Light up in, up in Maine. And it has been beaming its light since 1791. It is arguably the most photographed lighthouse in the United States. 
and you can see the wave coming to crash, and yet the light stands firm. Now, fun fact. Next one, Hannah. You're like, Pastor Dawn, that's not a lighthouse, that's a Statue of Liberty. You've lost your mind. Please sit down. <laughs> but this originally was a lighthouse. It was a light to shine on the ships coming in to the harbor. The Liberty Torch is 305 feet above sea level. I will tell you though, if, if you have not been to New York, if you have not seen the Statue of Liberty, I expected this monstrosity, like huge, right? Anybody not been to the New York, thinks it is big, think big, big, big. It's like this big. No, I'm kidding, it's not this big, but you get my point. I, I, I was shocked at how small it was. But it was a lighthouse nonetheless when it was given. It was meant to shine a light. But guess what happened? You're going to be shocked. Congress kept fighting about paying for the light to shine. Now, I know that that's hard to imagine, Congress fighting over money to be spent. Yeah, I know, you're all shocked. And because Congress fought, the light was not used in that way. And the Statue of Liberty had a different purpose. But you see, within the, in the darkness, there is the hope of light, of something shining. We look to God to be the light in our lives. We look to God to shine in the darkness and God promises just that in this scripture today. And if you continued on reading the scripture, you would know that God even promises bigger things. Look for God to do more than what is expected. God sent God's only son to be that light and yet we ignore it. We ignore the path that the light shines. I, uh, I, was, at, I was at Quest yesterday, um, having blood taken, and um, I, I said to the woman, I said, oh, do you have Monday off? And she said, no, we don't have Monday off. We have to work. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And she said, yeah, me too. She expressed to me that her church was having a service to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. And I said that in the United Methodist Church, we have churches that are celebrating on Sunday because of people that have to work. Martin Luther King Jr. lived during a time of great darkness in our country. Great darkness. We sometimes forget how dark 
the country was then. And because of that darkness, he was led to be a light. Hannah. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. You see, we are called as God's disciples to speak out, to be that light. There are things going wrong in our country today. I shared something with you today. Do we speak out? Do we become that light? Because that is what today's scripture talks about. Being a light, shining, being who God wants us to be so that others won't be in the darkness. Next one, Hannah, please. The ultimate measure of a person is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. Where do you stand? Where do you find yourself when things get difficult and rough? Are you turning on the light for those who can't reach the light switch or maybe who don't even have a light to shine? This is one of my favorites. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And if we are to be that love, if we are to drive out hate, then we must begin that journey to change the narrative. As we remember Martin Luther King, let us remember who Dr. King got his inspiration from. Dr. King was a pastor. And his work and his words and his legacy were created by God. Darkness can overpower and consume and envelop us where we feel we have no power. Jesus said, I am the light. Let us shine. Let us shine for Jesus. who showed us the way. Amen.
That was beautiful, thank you. Will you please rise as we sing our next hymn. <clears throat> Great is thy faithfulness.
Grover Cleveland said, the torch of the goddess of liberty is suffering from an attack of red tape. When the light for the Statue of Liberty could not be turned on, we do not have that problem because the God who created us gave us light in the form of Jesus and that light continues to burn bright. Will you join me in shining the light in the darkness? Amen. <laughs>